Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to our today's session, which is uh, a very important session for um, every one of us. And on the request of many of uh, our uh, valued partners, we have arranged our today's session, which is the Campus France visa procedure. And uh, that is very, very important, which nowadays many of you might be doing already for your students or many of you will be uh, doing the same procedure in the upcoming days. So uh, this session today, uh, uh, can you please unmute, uh, can you please mute yourself? Okay. So today's session will be on uh, the visa procedure. Uh, I will explain you in detail step-by-step -step procedure for campus runs because it is a mandatory part without which we cannot proceed for the France visa submission at VFS. I would request you like whatever questions you are having, uh, we will open up the floor at the end of the session uh, for the question and answer uh, things. And uh, I will be happy to solve all your questions, all your queries. Before we proceed, um, of course, I won't be giving you detailed information today about why France and why joining campus because uh, I have been discussing this uh, like in my past webinars as well. But yes, um, join in campus, all of you, you know, this is what is like, we are the world's leading ed tech company and uh, we are members of this uh, institutes. We are members of ICF, IFKI, NAFSA, EU, India Chamber. France information, I'm not going into detail. Uh, we do have a webinar coming up, uh, coming up for why study in France and the benefits for France. So today I won't go into the detail of this uh, things. Uh, so quickly, uh, yes, this is what today we are going to discuss, that is campus runs and visa procedure. And as I promised, I'm going to explain. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I mean, you're not audible to some of us. Mm. So can you just uh, look into it? Um, sure. The education street. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Himali. Um... Thank you. Sure, thank you. Himali, am I audible? Like, uh, uh, you... Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Maybe some net connective issue from that side because uh, you seems to be audible for all of us. Uh, is anyone else facing these issues? Please let me know. So uh, I'm not sure like whether this is an issue for anyone else. Okay. So Thanks, uh... I've, I've got Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Fine. Yes. So this is what we are going to discuss in detail today. And as I promised you, like I will be explaining you the step-by-step -step procedure. So uh, we will be creating a dummy account and I will take you through to the entire journey of the campus runs process, right from the creation of the account, validation of the account, uh, what are the details you need to enter into the same and what documents you need to upload, where you should take care right and uh, what are the usual uh, like uh, where where usually uh, you know uh, we make mistakes uh, like students or we as a consultancy uh, what are the mistakes usually we are doing so probably uh, we will discuss all these things yes but before we proceed this is the campus runs documents checklist okay and um, this is a very, uh, you know, general checklist of documents like any other country. But yes, uh, you need a valid passport with the validity of at least um, one year or uh, nine to 12 months. You require a letter of admission confirmation from the university that a student has been admitted. This will include all the letters from the university because sometimes it happens that whenever we are, you know, submitting the document student is admitted on a condition okay so uh, uh, we require this conditional of a letter apart from that once the condition is fulfilled you receive the unconditional of a letter so you require that as well apart from that there will be um, a housing certificate uh, given by some of the schools if some of the schools they don't give then of course housing needs to be booked like there should be a proper accommodation to be booked for actual one. So we require that letter. 
and the fees payment receipt. Okay, so uh, that we will also require. So these are all the letters that needs to be carried and that needs to be uploaded on the campus runs procedure while doing this. Apart from that, as I already discussed, like final unconditional offer letter with fee receipt, proof of accommodation. Yes, this will be from the school part. Then updated CV with email ID, contact number, Skype ID, proper information should be mentioned in the CV for the student. This is the one thing. Academic documents of the student, uh, like 10th onwards, if a student is applying for bachelor's or 12th onwards, if a student is applying for um, master programs, transcripts, degree certificate, uh, letter of recommendations, uh, then statement of purpose, work experience letter, if any, expense statement, expense statement, there is a format, uh, which is a very simple one, so that you can uh, get the format from your respective partner relationship manager, but that is a format in which you need to fill the details, like this is the expense and um, you are having so-and-so funds to fund these expenses. So this is what we need to mention in the statement. Like tuition fee will be uh, suppose 15,000 euros. Cost of living is this much minus whatever fees you have paid. But then you need to show that suppose 10,000 is the remaining amount. Then how you're going to show this by which means you're going to show this. So this is what we include in the expense statement. And most importantly, it is campus runs fees receipt. Okay, so that also I will show you like where you need to go and pay the campus runs fees, when and how. Okay, and then this receipt needs to be downloaded and it has to be also carried along uh, at the time of the interview. So these are the documents. Yes, no financial documents are required in campus runs. Pardon? No financial documents are required at campus runs because it is an academic interview. Okay, so campus runs, there is only an academic interview and students are not required to carry any of the financial documents. So that is completely fine. And these are only the checklist of the document that needs to be carried at the time of the campus runs interview. Now we will go through the procedure of the campus runs, which is very, very important. And I request all of you to please pay attention and uh, please go through the entire step-by-step -step procedure along with me. Just have a look. And of course, we'll be having a recording of this as well. So we will be giving you this recording for your future references. Okay, now this is the website. You can see where you need to go first. So now let me uh, take you uh, along with me, okay? so. Let's do the procedure together. Right. I hope my screen is visible. So you can go at this website as well. That is inday.campusruns.org. Simply go to this website. Over here, you can see Okay, I guess there is a issue. Just allow me one moment because you are not able to see the website. So just, just give me... Uh... Right. So I guess now uh, the website is visible. Okay, so this is the website that is inday.campusruns.org. So you go on this website, okay? And once you are on this website, you can see over here that is login, right? So click on the login part, okay? When you will click on the login part, this is the website it will open, which I have shown in my PPT previously, that this is the website. 
But yes, it is difficult to remember the name of this website. So that's the reason I said simply go to Google. You can type Campus France Login. And when you type Campus France Login, this will be the website you will get. That is indate.campusfrance.org. Click on Login. So automatically you will be redirected to this link. Okay. Just allow me a moment. Let me maximize my screen. Okay, so I hope you can see my screen, right? So this is what, but yes, now, over here, you can see that everything is in French. Don't worry. Again, at the right hand side, you can see there is an option like uh, to select the language you want to have, right? So from the drop down, select it as an English. Okay. So now you have the website in English. So very first thing, what you have to do is account creation because first you will have to create the account. So here there are two options that is sign up and sign in. So first go on sign up. Okay. So when you will go on sign up, these are the things you will be getting. Yes. So now here you have to select my campus runs office. Okay. So from the drop down, you have to select the campus runs office. So for us, you have to select the respective uh, country wherever you are located. So I am located in India. So I'm selecting campus runs in day. Okay. So this is what I have selected. After that, you need to write the address. Okay. So anything you can write, uh, they are asking for the, okay, address. So let us just, I am typing it. Okay. Email ID, sorry, this is the email ID what you have to give. So I have just created one uh, dummy email ID. So I'm just typing that email ID. So whatever is the student email ID, you have to type that email ID, okay? You have to reconfirm the email ID, okay? So please reconfirm and mention the same email ID what you have mentioned. Over here, it is family name. Okay, so this is a uh, family name is a surname. So I'm just putting the family name. Prename, prenom is the name. So first name, I'm putting the first name. Then the uh, whatever is the sex that is male, female. Okay, so again, I guess uh, for your conveniency, we, I will convert it into English. So you can see that there was a, you know, difficulty for us because it was in French. So on the right hand side corner, you can find FR and EN. So click on EN. So there will be uh, the entire thing will be in English. Okay. So you need to do this or else it will be difficult to understand like what they are asking. Uh, I sometimes it is easy because we do the process, but yes, always select the language as English. So now here it is surname. You keep the surname. Other name won't be there because uh, we need not to put the other name. Name. Okay. Gender. Then date of birth in the same format. So I'm just entering the date of birth in the format given. Country of birth. So these are the very basic information. So I will quickly go through it. Right, so ID document type, so that will be always passport. Okay, validity, you need to give whatever is the validity of the passport, you have to enter that validity. I'm just entering any details. Okay, so I'm entering any of this detail. Issued, country of issue, that is this. Now you need to click on both this information. That this is fine. If you want to click on alumni network of embassy of France, you can click or else this. Okay. So just click and create an account. Right. Now you will receive this kind of message. So student will receive an email which will be uh, having a link to validate the account. And this link will be, um, you know, 
valid only for 24 hours. So we need to activate the account within 24 hours. So here I have already opened an account, okay? That I don't know. Still have not received an email. This usually don't happen. I don't know whether I made a mistake in putting the account or not. I'm not sure. Just allow. Yes. Okay, so now we have received an email. Uh, this happens sometimes, like it takes time. So uh, this is what we um, face, like, you know, it took five minutes or three to four minutes. So yes, in this email ID, now I am having an email. So click on this, okay? This will be on the student's email ID. Here is the link, okay? So you have to click on the link. Again, make sure everything is in English. If not, click on again, EN, right? Now, to confirm account creation, enter your email ID and choose your password, right? So we need to enter the email ID again. Password, you have the this, uh, you must take care of the instructions given that it must be between 8 and 15 characters and all those things. One letter in lower, one in upper, contain at least one number, one special character or else it, it will not take it. Okay, so I will create a password. Right. So now confirm account creation. Okay. So our account creation has been confirmed and now we can log into Campus Runs online application. Okay. So again, you will be redirected to this site only. Right. So let us go over here. Again, you will have to select English language. Now sign up procedure has been done. So we will go for sign in. Okay. So our account has been created. Right, so this is the thing, right? And you will put the email ID and password what we have used. Okay, so now this is the page. It will appear on the right hand side. You can see uh, the name what we have kept. Then IN, this is the unique identification number which needs to be quoted for every communication with Campus Trans Manager, okay? So this information is very, very important. Please save it somewhere or else you can log into your account and you can take this information at any time. Now you can see that there are different, different types over here. First is apply for a program in France. This is usual mistake where we all do, right? Students or we as a consultant, we always do this mistake. We go on the first step and we complete the entire campus runs process and then there is an error. No, don't go in the first step because it is for the public university students, right? So we don't have to go in the first step. Always you have to go in the second step that is for start application for student visa at campus runs, okay? 
So you will go to the second tab. Now click on the second tab. Now when you are going to click on the second tab, there are two options. So we will always go for the first option that is your application and finish off the step-by-step -step procedure. Now in this section, specify whether you have been admitted to an exchange program or a full-time program. Majority of the times, 99.9% .9 of the time, our students will be admitted for the full-time program only, right? So from the below two options, we have to select the options, right? So first option is the exchange program that we don't have to select because our students- Ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, actually your screen is not visible properly, ma'am. Screen is not visible? Like what you have told you are options that is not available. Like uh, which option? No, it's all good here. Is it, is it good to go or still there is an issue? Ma'am, I think it's good. Might be due to the net connectivity from their side. It's really going well, I think. Okay. Yeah, it's going good. Okay, let me continue then because uh, I guess you will be getting a recording as well. So uh, please do refer to the recording and uh, I can also give you the training afterwards if required. Okay, so yes, from the two options, you need to select the second option that is admission letter for a full-time program from a French institution. Please make sure to select the second option because our students, they are not going for an exchange program. Don't make this mistake. Okay, so select the second option and then click on choose. Okay, now when you will click on choose, you have this like from the uh, drop down menu, you have to select the program, you have to select the institution, you have to enter the reason why you have selected this particular school and you have to upload the supporting documents, right? Here you can see the instruction in the box. Everything is mentioned. This five steps you have to complete at this point, right? Now, choose an option from the drop down menu. So, always you have to select as other. This is the default option, will be there. Now, enter the program details. Okay. So, there we by default we will go that program not available in catalog because this is there for the majority of the schools. So, don't select program in catalog. Always go with the option program not in catalog. Okay. Now, when you will select program not in catalog, you will get the below options to be entered because we need to enter each and every detailed information. So we have to select this, that program is not available. Now program details. So please make sure to enter the exact program name, what is mentioned in the admission letter. You have to copy the same name and you have to enter over here. Okay, don't mismatch the name. So over here, I am entering is as MSc in Global Business Management. Okay, so this is the program. Now enter the year. So yes, year you can see that it is year one, year two, three, four, five. Okay, so let me just explain you for this. Now we all know that in India, we have a system of 12 plus three. That is 12 plus three years of education. And now if a student is going for a master program, so it will be either a one year of master program or a two years of master program. So now after 12 plus three, if it is a one year of master program, it is year four. So you need to select year four. If your student is going for one, that is the uh, you know two years master program and uh, for the first year, you will be selecting year four. If your student has received admission directly into the second year, that is MSc 2, then you will be selecting as year 5. Because after 12, 3 years are of graduation. Fourth year is MSc 1. Fifth year is MSc 2. So you have to see in the admission letter that your student has received admission in year 1 or year 2. And you have to enter the details accordingly. This is for the masters. What about the bachelors? So for the bachelors, you have to enter the detail accordingly. It will be year one, okay? So if after 12, they are going for the first year bachelors, it will be year one. At times it happens that student gets the credit transfer and they are admitted directly into the third year of bachelor. Then you have to enter as year three, okay? So this is how it is going to work. 
And if it is 12 plus 4, then you have to select year 5. So this is very simple. Okay. So over here, I am selecting year 4. Assuming that the student has received admission into two years of master program. Okay. So I am selecting as year 4. Now level. So what is going to be the level of the program? That is uh, over here. It is the fourth year. Hello, Arvind. Yeah. Uh, sorry, to, uh, sorry to interrupt. Could you please, uh, you know, quickly again, let me know about that year, Vala. I'm somewhat yes. confused. See, over yes. here, uh, if, when we are selecting the entry year, then in the level year, you can see the drop down. Uh, so now I guess uh, you it will be clear to you. So see, first year is first year bachelor. Second year is second year bachelor. Third year is third year bachelor. Fourth year is first year master degree. Okay. So if your student is going for two years of master program, you have to select year four. If your student is going for uh, directly getting admission into second year of masters, then you will be selecting over here as year five. Okay. So I guess it is uh, clear now. If two years of master's, which means student is going to study for two years over there, year four and year five. So you will be selecting year four. If a student is getting admission directly into second year of master's, you will be selecting as year five because he's getting admission into second year. So it is the fifth year. Okay. And, and about two, if the course is only for one year, one year master's. If it is one year master's, you can select year four. If okay. it is 12 plus 3, then you have to see what student has studied. If he has studied 12 plus 3, then year 4. And if a student has studied 12 plus 4, then year 5. Okay? Okay. Right. So, here we are selecting year 4 and 4th year, that is 1st year master degree. Okay? So, level is like this. Now, field of study. So, see, field of study, you won't be getting the exact field of study. Right. So you can select the relevant field of study. If a student is going for computer science or IT or like that, so you can select computer science, IT means engineering or like that. Over here, I'm selecting management, assuming the student has received admission because we have entered global business management as a program. So I'm selecting management as a field. So you have to select the most relevant field from the options below over here. Now, degree type. Okay, so what will be the degree type? Now, please be careful while selecting the degree because few options over here you can see are in French and few will be in English. So while we are going down, you can see, see, if it is an MBA, you are getting an English option MBA. So you have to select option which is coming in English. Okay, please make sure that. Now see, Master of Science, MSc. You have another Master of Science MSc as well, but it, it is in French. So if you will select French one, which means student is going for the French dot my MSc, but don't do that. Select the English one. So be careful in selecting these options. Okay. So Master of Science MSc English one. Now choose the institution. Okay. So we have to choose the institution over here, but yes, uh, you will again select from here, you will enter the detail. It is not there. So right now I am entering the detail. Here again, you have to write the complete name of the school. And then search for it. Okay, so see, now when you are searching, you will be getting all the schools. So from this, you have to select the school in which student has been admitted. So I have entered as Paris School of Business. Okay, so now select site de Paris, which means it is on campus program. I am saving the options. Okay. Program start date, end date. Now, remember start date, it is very important. So if it is not mentioned in the admission letter, please ask your PRM to get this start date from the school. Okay, because start date is very important. Over here, I am mentioning the start date right now as 8th of January 2024. Okay, but it will be mentioned in the offer letter. End date, you have to write it approximately, taking into consideration duration of the program because end date will not be mentioned in most of the schools. So you have to take it approximately. So over here, we are assuming that it is a two years of program. 
So I am uh, writing the end date as 8 January 2026. So you can write the approximate end date. Don't wait for getting the end date of the program from the school. Write it approximately. Now enter reasons for your choice. So this part you have to take from the statement of purpose. Like highlight the reason why student has selected Paris School of Business. So in a statement of purpose, you have one specific paragraph like why student has selected this institution. So you have to copy and paste over here. So I am just writing over here as this. But yes, you will be copying those uh, things from the statement of purpose and paste it over here. Okay, now save. See, now you are getting an error. What is the error? Supporting documents not attached. Okay, so we have to attach the supporting documents. But yes, there is some other errors also. So over here, I need to select other. Yes, over here, it will be a full-time degree program. See, we skip this step. Like we have to choose an option from the drop-down menu. Like what is the uh, program? Whether it is a full-time entrance test, internship, doctoral studies or others but yes our student is going for a full-time degree program so we have selected full-time degree program now save oh gosh so over here the school has again gone this happens sometimes so let us just quickly type again select the school Okay, I guess now it should be okay. See, so these are the problems. Now they are asking to uh, upload the supporting documents. So supporting documents you have to upload over here is all this document. Now, please make sure that you have to upload all the supporting documents related to the admission. Conditional offer letter, unconditional offer letter, fees receipt and accommodation. If conditional and unconditional, they are one and the same, then there will be only one letter. But yes, you have to upload all the documents. Second most important thing, don't merge all the documents and upload together. Please don't do this mistake. Each and every document has to be uploaded, um, you know, separately, right? So, and this instruction you have to keep in mind, the document should be in PDF, JPEG, PNG format only, not exceeding 300 KB. So this is the most important information. Please keep this in mind. So uh, if your documents are more than 300 KB, please compress the document. Don't compress too much. It should be, uh, you know, uh, clearly visible. So quality should not be that poor as well. So compress it only to 300 KB, okay? And then you can upload over here. Now from here, you can choose the file. So I'm just selecting the dummy thing, but yes, please make sure that, you know, you rename the document properly, okay? So each and every document should be named like conditional of a letter, unconditional of a letter, fees receipt, then accommodation letter. So you have to rename the document properly. So see, I am assuming this is the conditional offer letter what I have uploaded. Again, I am uploading the same thing. This is, I am assuming I am uploading the fees receipt, okay? So the second document will upload over here. Now, third option I am uploading again, that is the accommodation, okay? So third time I have uploaded, that is the accommodation. So this is how separately you will be uploading each and every document. Don't merge and upload. Please upload separately. So now you have, the, you have the, done with this. So you have to save. Okay. So we have saved this. Now you can see complete. Okay. So our first step is complete. Right. So this portion is complete. Save it. Okay, once you will save this, you will be again coming back to this page. Now again, click on your application, right? 
So first portion, you can see that it is complete. It is coming over here. It is complete. Now, second portion, we have to come to it. That is enter personal details, educational qualification and language proficiency. So please click on this. Okay. Make sure that it is in English. Everything is in English. Okay. So now let us proceed. First of all, you have to upload the photograph. Again, the specifications are go given over here. So you need to follow this specification only. Please make sure you have a good quality passport size photograph of the student to upload. Don't crop from the passport and upload it. Okay. So upload the photograph over here. Okay. I'm just taking a dummy one. So I have uploaded the photograph. Now, over here, second, you can see personal details, what we entered, they are already over here. But yes, there are supporting documents to be uploaded. Okay, you can see the message over here, supporting documents not attached. So let us attach the supporting documents. So click on the supporting documents. Now, when we are clicking on the supporting documents, this is a message that we need to attach the supporting documents for personal details. Okay. So this will be the passport. So again, I am uploading the same, but make sure the rule remains the same. JPEG, PDF and all. Okay. And it should be properly uh, eligible, like the, you know, quality should be good and all. So upload it, save it, right? So now you can see here it is complete, okay? So this portion is complete. This portion is also complete. We have uploaded the supporting documents. Now comes the contact information part. So here you can see it is incomplete. So click on enter or modify the data, right? So here you have to write the details. Sorry, this is the complete address what you have to mention. Okay, so this is not mandatory. You can leave it. Mobile, yes, you can mention the mobile number of the student, right? And again, save the details, right? So now we have saved the details and you can see again, this information is complete contact information. Now comes other information, okay? In other information, you can see they are asking for the scholarship information. So this is again, very important. Now, if your student has received scholarship, you can, you know, enter the details over here, click on edit, uh, uh, modify the information. So from here, you can select the scholarships. So these are all the government scholarships. So if a student has received any government scholarship, you can select this. If a student has received a um, you know, scholarship from the school, select other and enter the detail. In a, choose also, you have to select other. Okay, so government scholarship, you have to select the names from the drop down. If student has received scholarship from the school, then you have to select it as other and other. And if there is no scholarship, then none of the above. Okay, and save it. Okay, so this is also completed. Now, CV. You have to make sure it is an updated CV as we discussed with all the details of the student, proper email ID, contact number, everything. So choose a file. PDF, JPEG format or like that, 300 KB, upload it. Okay, so I am just uploading the dummy document. For you, it will be the real one. So yes, we have uploaded the CV part also. Academic records, I am coming later on because it is a lengthy part. Let us just go first uh, to the other tabs. Academic, I am explaining you at last. Now, Hello. Friend, yes. Where to upload the work experience letters? Yes, it, it will be in the academic part. I'm coming to that part later on. I'm explaining you that. Okay. 
so french language this is not applicable for our students right so leave this portion as it is french language certification yes but if any of your student they have done this some of the students they have a level or a1 level or b1 level so you can select it you can upload it but majority of the students they won't be having so just skip this part and it is not mandatory but yes after this this portion is mandatory that if French has been the medium of instruction or not. So over here, you have to enter modify. See, it is simple thing. Wherever you are getting enter or modify tab, that part is mandatory. If you will not enter anything over here, then it will show as incomplete. Okay. So enter and modify, right? Over here, it will be no, no, because never ever student has studied in French, right? So medium of instruction was not French. And yes, if your student has studied French, then they can select yes or native speaker, whatever it is, according to the student uh, studies, and then they can enter the detail. But yes, for majority of the student, it will be no, no, and then save. If you by any chance are selecting yes, then they will ask you for all these details, right? So you have to enter all these details where student has studied French, how many hours, which state, which city, which institutions and duration and everything. Okay, so this is no. And maybe once you will select yes, you will also have to upload the supporting document. You for whatever reason you are selecting yes, you have to sub upload the supporting document. So no and no, and now save it. Okay, so we have saved this. So this part is completed. Previous stay in France and all this, if there is an history, you can, but it is not mandatory. So I will advise to skip this part. English language proficiency. See, again, here you are having the tab enter or modify. So this is what I'm talking about. Wherever you will have the tab, enter, modify, enter, modify, right? So those part are mandatory one. And where it is choose, you can skip, it is not mandatory. So now English proficiency. So English proficiency, you can see it is clearly mentioned over here. If your student has given TOEFL or PTE or IELTS exam, you can enter those details. If not, you can enter the marks of 12th, that is 10 plus 2 score obtained and you also have to upload the mark sheet 10 plus 2. As I said, wherever you are entering yes details, you have to support your yes. Okay, so let's do this. Let's enter or modify the details. I have studied English, so yes. Okay, test name. So if student has given test, IELTS or TOEFL or whatever test, you can select and upload the documents, enter the score. I will advise if in IELTS, student has score less than six bands, please don't enter, okay? Six or more than six, it is good to go. Less than six, please don't enter that. Now, if student has not given any of this entrance exam, select other, okay? Select other. Now, others mean we will go with the 10 plus 2 details. So, we have to enter the 10 plus 2 uh, board. So, over here, I am just mentioning Gujarat Higher Secondary Board. You can mention whatever board student has studied. Score obtained. So, I am selecting like whatever are the marks only in English. Okay. Make sure to enter only English subject marks. No other marks. Maximum score on a score of 100. Year, so in which year student has passed out 12th, you have to enter that over here. I'm selecting as 2018. 12th passed out year will be year, okay? And so this are the things, save the details. Now see, supporting documents, right? Wherever you are entering the details, you need to upload the supporting documents. So over here, what documents you will upload? You will upload two documents over here. One is the 12th standard mark sheet and the another document is medium of instruction letter. Now where a student can get this medium of instruction letter? A student can get this medium of instruction letter from the college where he has studied that the medium of instruction was English. Okay, so we need to get this kind of letter from the college because IELTS is waived off for France. So we require this letter. Now let us upload the supporting documents. Again, 
over here don't merge the documents upload turn by turn so first document you will upload it is 12th mark sheet rename the document upload it okay then again you will choose the file that will be medium of instruction letter rename the file everything should be renamed properly right so this will be the two documents that you have uploaded save it okay so now you can see this portion is also complete you are getting the messages complete right so this all uh, tabs are completed now we are coming to the most important tab that is the academic records here you can see they have also mentioned that this is a very important section please read the instructions below carefully okay so this is very very important section now what are the instructions choose 10 plus 2 or equivalent click on choose enter details add supporting documents okay and choose the next appropriate option that is university degree enter the details supporting documents and all okay this is not that clear so let me explain you so over here you can see these are the options higher education information university degree 10 plus 2 or equivalent 10 plus 1 and entrance and others now if your student is going for a bachelor program, you will be selecting 10 plus 1. Okay. You will select 10 plus 1 and then you will enter the details and then you will upload the 12th mark sheet. Now, as our student is going for master program, we will select 10 plus 2. Okay. Because after 12th, our student is going. So, you need to remember these things. So, we will be selecting 10 plus 2 or equivalent. Okay, now choose. So when you will select, you will again get this information to write. Now academic year. So in which year student has completed bachelor's, you can select that. Okay, directly the third year bachelor completion, you can select. So I, over here, I am selecting as 2022. State, city. Now. If option is not available, you can just uh, enter institution name. So click other, okay? And you can write this. So I will write as Gujarat University. So whatever university student has done is bachelor's, you can select that. Now over here, 10 plus two or equivalent. Now this will be the combined CGPA of the entire bachelor's that we have to mention marks or grades or percentage or cgpa whatever it is so i am mentioning over here the combined cgpa so yes this usually happens right so this is like don't get panic just go again and do the things again sometimes uh, there are you know technical issues on the side Okay, so after this, you have to select the class that is distinction, first class, second class, whatever it is from the mark sheet. Now, additional information, if you wish to provide, no need to provide over here, just save it. But yes, you need to upload the documents. Okay, now again, over here, you have to upload all the documents, right? So over here, you will have to upload each and every year mark sheet that is first year bachelor's mark sheet, second year bachelor mark sheet, third year bachelor mark sheet, or if you are having transcript, you can also upload the transcripts as well. Or if you want to upload separately everything, you can upload separately, right? Semester wise, you can upload semester wise, but yes, don't merge everything together and upload. Whatever documents you are uploading, you have to upload everything, okay? So supporting documents, now you will enter all Assuming that it is a three years bachelor's, I will upload document three times. So year one mark sheet, year two mark sheet, year three mark sheet. Okay. So I have uploaded three years of mark sheet. Hello. Yes. Uh, what if student has having a 12 plus four years bachelor engineering, then it should be having like eight results along with transcript. Then it should be nine documents over there. 
Yeah, so see, in this case, you can upload transcripts. That will be four transcripts, right? Because transcript either or else you can get one transcript. So what you can do, what I will advise in this, you can merge semester, like semester one and two merge together and rename it as year one, bachelor year one. Three and four merge together, bachelor year two, right? So like this. So there will be four bachelor, four years mark sheets. And fifth document will be transcript. So like this, you will be having lesser documents, only five documents, right? So year-wise, you can merge the documents. Semester mark sheets, you can merge it, but not all years together, right? So this is what we have done. We have uploaded uh, the bachelor mark sheets. Now comes, yes, higher education information that is 12th mark sheet you can upload 12th details over here okay so you can choose the 12th information same which year student has done so 2018 i am randomly selecting right institution so other okay you can mention over here as i am mentioning just gujarat board right Okay, this is the bachelor's, what we are uploading, field of study. And additional information if it is required or no, no, not required, then that's fine. Again, upload the supporting documents. Okay, so this is what, how the academic documents. Now comes the degree certificate part, okay? So degree certification is very important. If a student is not having the degree certificate, student might have the provisional one, not the provisional, student might have the course completion. So from here, you have to go on the university degree, okay? Select the drop down university degree and upload the degree completion certificate or the degree certificate or the provisional certificate, okay? Now select the year. This is program completed, okay, or pursuing, right? But it is completed. So this is what we will be selecting. Institution, again, you can select on your own. Degree type, so I'm selecting as Bachelor of Commerce. Degree name, again, it will be the same, that is BCom. Whatever is the CGPA for all the three years, again, the class program type, so it will be full-time program. Additional details, if you want, you can enter or just say. Now, supporting documents you have to upload. Don't forget to upload the degree certificate over here. Okay, and save it. So this part is done. So uploading of academic documents is completed. Now I am coming to the Okay, over here, the supporting document is not uploaded, so. Okay, right. So see, you will be getting a error in orange thing, which means that something is wrong. So you need to again upload the documents. If not, I don't know what is the problem in over here. Okay, now it will be done. Yes. Okay, so here you can see that it should be like this. It should come in green color, complete, 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 which means the entire thing is complete. Now comes the work experience part. So 
before I go to work experience part, the very important thing what I would like to highlight is if a student is having a gap of more than six months after he has finished the bachelor's and going for master's. So over here, you can see that, you know, uh, we have selected as 22, 23. So there is a mistake from my side over here. Uh, both the years are 22. But yes, uh, if a student has finished off the studies in the year 2022, and now a student is going for the studies in 2024, so which means there is a gap of one year. So you need to justify this gap. Okay. Now in this gap, student might have work experience, student might have done the preparation for higher studies or student might have done nothing. So first, let me take the first option that student is having work experience, okay? So in this case, what we will do? So if a student is having work experience, again, go to the drop down, select the option other, okay? Select the option other, now click on choose. So when you will click on choose, now academic year, this is somewhat very important. So here you have to select the year in which student has quit his job or if the job is ongoing, select the 2023 year. Sometimes it happens that student is having two or three work experience letter. Student has done two or three jobs. Then you will have to enter the details for two to three times, right? So maybe let us assume that student has done two jobs. So 2022, 2023, then you will have to enter the detail two times. You will have to do this procedure two times. But over here, I am entering it as one time. That is 2023. Now, this activity is completed or it is ongoing. So if a student job is ongoing, you have to select ongoing. If it is completed, you have to select completed. We are assuming it is completed. Now, if it, the job is completed, if a student has quit the job because he's going abroad, so he has quit the job, then he will be having the work experience letter. So in this case, we will be uploading the work experience letter. But if it is ongoing, still student is working, sometime it happens, student thinks that I don't want to quit my job right now. Once I receive the visa, I will quit my job. So in that case, you need to select ongoing. Now, when it is an ongoing, obviously you won't be having the work experience certificate. Some company may provide, some company may not provide, okay? So if it is ongoing, select ongoing. And in this case, the document, what you will upload, it will be the offer letter. Okay, so I think I'm clear. If, if, if the job is ongoing, you have to upload the um, offer letter. Can you please uh, mute yourself? Uh, Himali, can you just check like and mute? Uh, Ma'am, I think you can mute him directly because you are the host. Okay, His I name is Harshil. Know. Harshil Gaur. Uh, Harshil, can you please mute yourself? Okay. Thank you, Harshil. Yes. So, if you uh, have, uh, like, if a student has quit his job, then you can upload the work experience. If it is ongoing, then you can upload the offer letter. Now, in case if a student is having two jobs, one is completed, one is ongoing. So for one, you will select that it is completed and upload the work experience letter. Second, you will select ongoing and upload the um, offer letter. Okay, so here I'm selecting it as a completed. Then you have to uh, enter the details. Now, activity name. So in activity name, you will write the company name, okay, in which student has, is working. So I'm writing as ABC. Now details, here you can see the details are also mandatory, okay? So what details you will mention? So over here, you have to mention the roles and responsibility of the student in the job, what he's doing, designation of the student, start date of the job and end date of the job. These four things you have to mention. Okay, please keep in mind, roles and responsibilities, designation, 
start date and end date. These four details you have to mention over here. Then save it. Now, here you will have to upload the supporting document. Okay, so here I am uploading the supporting document. Right, so this was regarding the work experience thing. Okay. Right, so now this is completed. Until and unless you don't get complete over here, please check, don't proceed, okay? Now we are going for the second option. The second option is if a student has like no work experience, nothing. Student has done nothing. He has just, uh, you know, he was sitting idle and preparing for the study abroad plan, right? So what in this case? But yes, you have to justify. Six months se zada gap hai. If there is a gap of more than six months, you have to justify. So again, select other. Click on choose year, whatever it is, like 2023. Uh, completed, select is as completed. Now, in the activity name, what you will select, you will write gap justification. Okay. So over here, you are giving justification of the gap. Details you will write, attach gap justification letter. So now, student will have to write on a Word document, like what is the justification reason? He has to give the reason for the gap, right? What is the reason? So he has to mention the reason. And at the end, bottom of this letter, there will be student name, mobile number, email ID, student signature. If you are typing it in Word, it will be the digital signature, okay? Or you can write it, student can write it, sign it and scan the document, whatever is convenient. Either way you can go. But if it is a Word document, remember to convert it to PDF because Word is not accepted. Either JPEG or PNG or PDF, okay? So yes, over here, this will be the, the gap justification. You have to attach the gap justification letter. You have to mention everything and then save it. Upload the supporting document as I said, okay? And save it, right? So yes, over here, we can see that gap justification, it is saved. So now here, this tab is completed, okay? So all the things are now completed. Now go back. Now you select on track or view your application. Okay, track or view your application if you want to view. If not, go again on point one, that is your application. Verify your entries and submit. Once you submit, then you will able to view your application. So click on verify, verify your entries and submit. Click on this. This thing is very important. Over here, you can see that our all the three tabs are completed. Personal details completed, educational qualification completed, language proficiency completed. If any of this is incomplete, you will not be able to proceed, okay? So this is very important. This thing should, all the three things should be completed. Then program for which admission has been granted, it is also completed, okay? Now what you have to do, I confirm that all the information provided is accurate and click on second part also. So click on both these things and then click on submit, okay? If you are... Uh, okay with all the information, all the documents uploaded, everything. If you are sure about everything, then and then only click on submit because once you will submit your application, you will not be able to modify any of the details. And this will be submitted to the Campus France portal. Okay. So this was the last step. Click on both this option and submit. Your application will be submitted. Now, if there is anything campus runs won't, then student will receive an email, okay? And you will be able to make modification only in that particular section. Whatever section details they are asking for, the student can make modification in that section only. Student will receive an email, okay? 
So this is what campus runs procedure is. This will be completed and submitted. Sometimes students are asked for the salary slips, six month salary slips. So in order to avoid this thing, if a student is having salary slips of six months, upload the salary slips along with the work experience document only. This is what I will advise, okay? If not, then absolutely it is fine. It is not mandatory, but sometime campus runs may ask for this document. Now, everything is done. We have submitted, uh, what is the next step? So once a student has submitted all these things, student from his email, he has to write an email to the campus runs manager, right? Now, what will be the format of this email? Student will write that I am so-and-so student. I have secured admission in Paris School of Business for MSc in Global Business Management Program for spring intake. This is my IN number. This is very important. Student has to mention this. This is my IN number. Please schedule my academic interview. Okay. So this is what email will look like. And then student has to send this email to the respective campus runs manager. Okay. Over here in Gujarat, it will be Ahmedabad campus runs. Then Hyderabad, Hyderabad, Chennai, Chennai. So it will be the respective campus runs. But yes, this is how student will send an email to schedule and campus runs interview. Now, if everything is okay, student will receive an email automated email from the campus runs itself that here all the information is good to go. Here, here all the information is received. Everything is completed. So if a student receive an email like this, if everything is completed, then and then student has to pay the campus runs fees. Please remember, if all the information is completed, then and then only student has to pay the campus runs fees. Now let us come to that portion. So this is the website where student will go and pay the campus runs fees. That is payment.ifeindia.in, okay? Or else you can also type in Google and you will get this link or save this link. Now over here, you have to select again, what is the purpose of paying the fees? So it will be campus runs processing fees, right? So once you will select, you will get it 18,000 INR. This is the campus runs processing fees. Okay. I agree on the terms and conditions. Click on next. Now over here, see, you have to write the IN number. So we can get the IN number from here. Take your IN number. Okay. Take your IN number. Okay. Write the details. Select the campus runs desk. This is very important. Select your respective campus runs desk. So I'm selecting Ahmedabad. State and all, this is not mandatory. If you want to write, you can write. Mobile number, it is mandatory. Email ID, what email ID we have used. Student email ID. Okay, and next. Okay, so this is the thing. These are the details. Now click on pay, right? And this will be the option. These are the options. You can pay the fees by credit card, debit card, or internet banking. Uh, please, please mute yourself. Uh, Supriya, can you please mute yourself? Thank you. Okay, so these are the options by which you can pay the fees. Now, once the fees is paid, please download the receipt because this receipt student has to carry at the time of campus runs interview. Okay, so once the campus runs fees is paid, then and then only the interview will be scheduled. Okay, now see, sometimes it happens you are having two or three students. You have done campus runs of one student today. You are doing campus runs of another student after one week. Okay, but still it happens like, you know, for the student for whom you have done campus runs one week later, you are getting interview first. Now you will say, how come this is possible? I have done campus runs later, but still for the student for whom I have done campus runs first, I have not received the interview. So don't compare this. It doesn't matter like when you are doing campus runs. Campus runs manager will always schedule an interview 
on the basis of the start date of the program. Okay. Earlier the start date, the interview will be scheduled first. They will be given the priority first. Preference will be given to those students first. Okay. So this is how it goes. So once everything is completed, at least you have to give seven to eight working days to schedule the interview. Right. And once the interview is scheduled, that is fine. You just go for the interview. Right. And once the interview is completed, student will receive the NOC email. Okay. Student will receive the no objection email. Take the printout of the of that email. And after receiving this NOC email, then and then only take an appointment at VFS, not before that. Okay. So again, after the interview, you need to give eight to 10 working days to campus runs manager to get you this NOC because it comes from the centralized team. Yeah. I'm having a question. Like if we have paid the deposit fee 8,000 for the price process and what if they reject profile of the student so is it refundable or not see if rejected like on what basis if some information is missing you can always uh, you know they will first ask you that's what i said that until and unless you don't receive an email stating that uh, your campus runs information or your campus runs profile is completed don't pay the fees okay that is the first thing so once you receive this kind of email from campus runs that uh, the profile is completed, then and then only you pay the fees. So this is the first thing. Second thing, like if a student visa is refused or if a student wants to defer now the intake, then student has to pay the fees again. It is not refundable. Campus runs fees are not refundable. Okay. So in both these cases, they will have to redo the process again. Again, in the next intake, student will have to create an account, do all this procedure again, pay the fees again. In case of visa refusal also, they have to do this procedure again. Okay. So, okay. yeah. So once a student receives an NOC email, take the printout of that email. And after that only, student can schedule the appointment at VFS. Hello. Yes. And when we are uploading the uh, work experience documents, then when we upload the documents, once we came out, since it's showing orange, once we upload the old documentation and it can be, it will be in green. But on the above, it says other academic information. Uh, but why it should be showing like a work experience detail, or is it okay if it's showing other academic information? Yeah, that is fine because you need to upload in this tab only all the documents and there is no separate tab given for work experience. This is in the new portal they have not given. Like in the old portal, they were giving the separate tab, but now they have removed that. So you have to upload in this tab only. That is academic portion only you have to upload and you have to select other. Okay. That is what we do and this is a practice what campus runs people have advised to go with it. So select other and upload the work experience documents. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. And then uh, one more question I'm having. If the student is having a less than six months gap, then is is, is ready to go without any gap justification or without any work experience, let's say. Yes, yes. Less than six months, it is definitely okay. You can proceed. No need to give any justification or no need to upload any documents. Okay. So this was... And the yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And when we are uh, selecting the choosing the schools while uh, on the first entry, when the first step, when the first part of the information, then um, some of the schools are unavailable, like uh, such as uh, ABS, like these schools or some of the other calls are not there. It can't be, it can be found on the portal or campus plans uh, website. Uh, I will say you why it is not found because you are uh, writing the short form. Whenever you will write the short form of any school, it will not show. If you write ABS, it will not show. You have to write the full name of the school, American Business School. Then only it will show. If, if your student is going for Rain's school, you have to write the full name of the school, that is Rain's School of Business. 
okay then what if the uh, if the our student is going let's say an example is going on sl ska hmm yeah if, if you will type sl ska sl ska will come or okay. if you type sl ska business school then also it will show okay so remember this please type the full name of the school and if you are not sure of the full name refer to the admission letter you will get the name from the admission letter Okay, so uh, this was from my side for the presentation today. I have explained each and everything in the detail. Still, if you have any doubts, any queries, you are free to contact me or you are free to contact your partner relationship manager. And what I will suggest you uh, that, you know, don't submit. Okay, once you have done uh, the entire... Sorry, ma'am, sorry, go ahead. I will ask you later. Yeah. Once you have done the entire procedure, please don't submit. Ask your partner relationship manager to view the uh, process, view the entire account first. And if we say go ahead, then only go ahead and submit. Because if you submit, you cannot make the changes. So your partner relationship manager will check all the details. And if they he or she says that you are okay to go, then and then only you proceed. Okay. So this is how we will be assisting you. We will check your campus runs before you submit. Yeah, thank you. And we have been experienced that, that sometimes when we are when we do the payments of campus runs, that is eighteen thousand amount. But sometimes it cuts twice, and and I don't know, it's something from website crash or or I don't know. Sometimes we receive OTP and then we can uh get the message from bank and sometimes we don't receive any otp or something not confirmation any kind of confirmation by france campus france and some, suddenly amount will be cut from the account and yeah we have to make twice payment and then we have to apply for the refund you know that's all cows because once we want, we want to refund from campus france then you know all the documentation that they want that is mm. yeah like you know sometimes it happens because today also we saw that um in the website, if there is an error or like that, we will have to redo the process, right? So regarding this also, what I will say that if the amount is deducted from your bank, uh, take the screenshot of that message and please contact your bank first. If they say that, yes, it is debited and it is credited to the party, don't redo, don't repay again. In that case, please confirm with Campus France that, okay, our bank has confirmed that you have received the payment. So please uh, let us know that whether you have received the payment or not. If yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, though, but the when we when we did the first time, let's say when we did the first time, that time we haven't received any confirmation from the campus France as well. It says on the screen, it's, it was saying on the screen as well, like uh, your payment transaction was failed. And then then we have to try different. When, when, then we tried another time and it said it's bank account. Uh, then we received any message from Okay, so see, if the that transaction is failed, then of course you have to rule the transaction. That we tried first time, but the payment wasn't uh, successful from the campus funds. So there's somehow, so somehow, uh, like the we have paid twice to the campus fund. Okay, but then did you apply for the refund in that case? Hello? Hello. Okay. In this case, if this is a problem, you can always apply for the refund. You need to give the valid documents and everything to the campus runs and um, you can get your refund. Okay. So it, it may happen, but it does usually don't happen always. Sometimes it happens. Like if you are not that lucky, it will happen like once in a while, not every time. So yes, now I open up the floor as such. The floor is open only for the question and answer session and solving the queries as well. Let me um, just quickly go to the chat box and see like, uh, you know, what are the queries? Uh, is Skype ID necessary to mention in CV? It is not mandatory. So it is up to your choice whether you want to mention the Skype ID or not. Uh, who can issue expense statement? Nobody can issue the expense statement. We only have to, uh, you know, make the expense statement. As I said, that there is a format of the expense statement, which you can get from your partner relationship manager. And you have, you need to mention the details in this expense statement.
Uh, yes. What if in passport there is no last name? Okay. So sometimes like for many of the students, it happens. So simply you uh, mention like you just uh, mention the middle name or keep it as a dash or not available. You can write like that, whatever you wish. Okay. If a student is doing double masters, then you need to upload all the information of double masters as well. It will be the same procedure what we did. Okay. So uh, upload all the mark sheets and everything. Oh, hi, ma'am. That's, uh, I will, I was the person where. Yes. Yeah. Tell me. And I was asking like if the student is going for double masters. So mm -hmm. the year, like as you have mentioned, like if uh, the student has, student has done 12 plus mm -hmm. three years of graduation, then it would be four. Mm -hmm. And if the two years of mm -hmm. masters is over, then it, yeah. it would be like five yeah, months. Yeah. What if he has like, he is going for double masters, then what would be the years in count? Yeah, see, so first you have to upload the bachelor's as I said. After that, when you are uploading your master's, it will be year six, year seven, right? So four, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, seventh year. It goes like this. Okay. okay. Uh, is it mandatory to upload accommodation in uh, campus runs? Yes, it is mandatory. So you need to take the actual accommodation. You need to advise student to take the actual accommodation. If uh, the proper accommodation letter is not received from the school side, it is mandatory. Uh, yes, in place of 10 plus 2, you need to enter the intermediate details, that is 12 details. And in place of higher education, it will be the bachelor details. Yes, it is right. Hello. Uh, yes. Do we have to show if the student has visited any other countries, uh, then is it mandatory to show or is it not important? No, it, it is not mandatory. It is not important. So at the time of the interview, campus runs manager may ask about that. But um, here it is not mandatory to enter the details. France visit, we see that uh, there is a tab asking the details about the France visit. So if a student has visited France previously, you can enter the details. Still, it is not mandatory, but yes, if you wish, you can enter. Other country, it is not mandatory. Ma'am, if the student is having any rejection for any other countries, is it mandatory to show? No, we are not having any details over here, but if you mm -hmm. want, then you again have to select other, you have to enter the details, upload the documents. No, is it mandatory to tell that? It, it is not mandatory because passport, everything is, uh, you know, visible. You can mm -hmm. see. So while going for the interview, if campus runs manager feels, he will ask that why there was a rejection, what was the reason and everything. But mm -hmm. not mandatory right now because there is no such step given for the things. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, yes. Ma'am, uh, what? Student has recently rejected uh, for the university, for the France University. And again, he got admitted into the some other university for this intake. So do we need to mention the same? No, no, no. Campus runs, there is no need to mention that previously the admission was refused. We only have to enter the details of those uh, university or school where student is admitted. Campus runs is not concerned, like whether student was refused to one or the other school and now he has been admitted to some other school. No. We will so, enter only those school details where student is admitted. Okay, then uh, uh, do what do we do? We need to give any gap justification for these uh, four months, like the four to six months gap. See, no. less less than six months, no justification is to be given. Okay, if there is a gap okay. of more than six months, then and then only the justification needs to be given. In that, can do we need to mention this reason? Or uh, do we mention that they have uh, done some certified courses like that? Yeah, you can mention that student has done some certified course. 
or maybe yeah. sometimes you can mention that student was preparing for the higher studies abroad whatever is no, but no, it said. should be it should be the valid reason make sure that it should be the valid reason yes thank you ma'am okay hello good evening hi amli yes hi hi amli can you hear me yeah i can hear you yes mom yeah. i can hear you yeah this is murthy see yeah. uh, actually regarding this uh, campus trans uh, procedure i don't mm. know if you are aware uh, now hyderabad they are taking lot of time to complete the process are you aware of this of this issue yes i am aware because see um, south of india there are lots of applications and hyderabad is the busiest uh, campus trans receiving mm -hmm. a lot of applications right mm -hmm. so it, it takes time and specifically uh, during the fall intake so no, what it's, it's I, not it's not yeah. just taking time mm -hmm. but uh, what uh, she is asking is like uh, they need to apply at least two, two months in advance i mean now they are not accepted for jan intake i mean even though they have given extension till 22nd of jan last one week uh, she wrote in the application she is not processing it further she is saying you get extension till february middle whereas it's not possible i think uh, that's what imani told me yes so what to do in this case because students have paid the fees they got uh, funds accommodation everything is ready but she is not giving the interview she is saying extension is required till february middle so what to do in this case i'm not able yeah. to understand that murthy in this case like uh, there are two options only what mm. i will say very clearly mm. uh, first option is either student defers the intake that is uh, i guess you know not possible and it won't be justifiable for the student as well yeah because so we have still have time yeah we have but mm. you know it depends on campus runs manager to manager all campus runs manager they are not the same okay mm -hmm. so we we cannot argue with them and we cannot argue the decision right mm -hmm. because ultimately uh, the interview is a mandatory part so we need to follow their instructions as well so second mm -hmm. part is like if possible we can show like student is having work experience in some other city that to more than 6 months maybe in chennai maybe in bangalore and then applying for chennai campus runs or bangalore campus runs this is only the second option third option what i will say earlier the better if you know that in hyderabad this is the case then please you know finish off the process earlier this is what i will say okay so but for next intake okay i understand hmm. but uh, for now these three students four students who are already ready and they have paid the fees they are ready with everything hmm. so last uh, more than one week uh, it is not progressing further like what to do because september is quite far if it is a uh, one to month three months gap uh, wait, waiting period we can ask them to wait for next intake right so in this case i think we need to either speak to campus trans and request her or maybe okay. give an extension to, a little one beyond thing, the, one thing hmm. just email us or whatsapp us like uh, which hmm. school student has been admitted so either we or school we will speak to the campus trans manager directly no, i am actually i am in touch with himali i give her details already uh, three four days back you okay. know following up Mm. And this we need to notice so that uh, I don't know if you are aware. Uh, schema, uh, we have th three students who paid fees and uh, no waiting for uh, this interview to be finished to go for visa process. Sure. What I will do, like I will try and speak to the I campus manager, or maybe I will I will ask uh, Schema School to speak to the campus trans manager. Okay. But uh, I'm not assuring you anything because already the Christmas holidays have started. But mm. yes, let me give a try from my end, and uh, let me also try if anybody is available at the school department, and uh, I will make sure that I will try my best possible way that student gets the interview. Okay. Yeah, or at least you can request campus friends to you know arrange the interview, because uh, we recently we had another student, uh, uh, she did interview and she got letter within two three days mail from campus friends. Okay. If they can do that, twenty second is the uh, extension date they have they, they have given. And sure. we saw also we saw last intake uh, last intake they got the visa in two three days four days time also. Okay. From Bangalore. Sure, so I, I, will, I will. I will try. Definitely possible. Yeah. Um, okay, Murthy, I will try and we will get back to you on that. Okay. Yeah, please. It's very very important actually. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And. Uh, Hello, ma'am. Good evening. Is there any issues uh, for a student uh, long study gap? For example, if one student completed his bachelor degree uh, at two thousand fifteen, and after eight years, is he admitted uh, for masters in France? Is there any issues for long study gap? 
there is no issues of long study gap but you need to give the proper justification what student has done in this eight years proper justification needs to be given okay thank you okay. yeah okay so um, i guess um, we will end the session over here it's been like a long time and yes few so people last doubt yeah if it is a maternity gap what kind of uh, um, justification can they give any certificates how yes. can they provide yeah Mat maternity documents we can upload and we can clearly mention that it was because of this uh, reason in the justification letter you can mention the reason and you can upload the supporting documents okay thank okay. you so yes uh, this was it from my today's session uh, many of you have requested for the vfs procedure as well of course my next webinar is on uh, the vfs procedure only so because i knew that campus runs hello, a lot of time yes hello sorry to interrupt i have some questions sorry okay. can i ask yeah yeah please yeah um, I have some uh, questions because uh, for the last index, uh, from my side, we got four rejections. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, even we had uh, accommodations from the school side, like our international business school, we got rejections. Mm -hmm. So, our question is like, uh, from the campus front's interview and the SOP we write for the uh, visa, is that, uh, will they look for that? Like, the interview is they are asking the questions which in the campus grants and the what we write in the SOP. Will they come there? The SOP and the interview answers. See, obviously, because uh, the SOP should be written by the student. From the yeah. SOP, we are just taking one paragraph. That is why student has selected a particular school, whether it is an aura business school, whether it is a Paris school of business, whether it is a rain school of business, whatever it is. So why student has selected a particular business school we are taking that from the SOP. Now, in campus runs, of course, the campus runs manager usually asks this type of questions only. And they check, like, what is the level of English of the student? How motivated is the student to go and study in France? And why a student has selected France as a destination? Why student has selected this particular school? So in any case, if these two are not matching, then campus runs manager, they are very smart to make it out that student has not written SOP on his own. Okay. So definitely there should be a correlation between these two things. So student, uh, though they have not written SOP on their own, but at least they should be aware, right? That what is mentioned in the SOP, what reason they have given, what reason either you have given while writing an SOP that why you have selected a particular business school. So this is very important. And yes, student, he should be very confident in the interview. The level of English should be very good because IELTS is not mandatory for France. And the motivation of the student should be at the peak. Okay, so this, this reason should match with the SOP. Okay, thanks. Yeah, welcome. And one more. Next question. Yes. Another related to fund. Yeah. Uh, we are showing funds for the bachelor's as well as for the master's. For the bachelor students, we have to show fund for like we are paying one year of fees. Then we have to show the two years of fees and one year of leaving expense. It will be like approximately like 30 lakhs rupees. Then for the master's, it will be like 20 lakhs rupees. So and my question is like, which is better, fixed deposit or savings? See, uh, both you can go. You can go with fixed deposits as well. You can go for savings as well. You can combine both the sources. But whatever sources it is there, it should be minimum three months old. This is what it is required. And the third source is you can also go for an education loan. So it will be not an old one. Education will be the fresh one. So yes. Both are valid. All the liquid assets are valid. So fixed deposit is also acceptable. Savings account is also acceptable. So this, this all things are acceptable. That is fine. And yes, I'm going to discuss on this in detail in my next webinar, like on the funds portion, how you need to show the funds, what will be the ideal funds that is the calculation part and also the VFS procedure. So please stay 
updated for my upcoming webinar. Take the information from your PRMs. And uh, now if you have any queries, please feel free to contact your partner relationship manager. And um, thank you all of you. Thank, thanks a lot for um, attending today's session. And thank you so much, ma'am. It was awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Have a nice evening. Oh, happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We need the recording. It would be very nice. No, sure, sure. We'll pass on the recording. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.